Frag Attack Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another episode of Frag Tag Radio. Here with you today are your boys, Paradius. And matter of fact. Um, so, uh, first we want to get those plugs out there. Of course, you got uh, the big one, Happy Gamer. Happy. Happy makes you happy. That's on, uh, let's see, Windows 8, iOS, Android, pretty much anywhere. Happy's everywhere. Hmm. And then you got uh, Game RSS uh, on Android. Shouts to Troy. Troy. And then, uh, let's see, Filter Gaming, Android, Gaming News and Reviews, Android, that's on iOS also. Um, Game On. And then yeah. uh, Game On is on Windows Phone and iOS. Great, great apps. Download them, get them all. They're free. Enjoy. And of course, your boys, Frag Tag Radio, on every single one of those apps. So, yeah. uh, And if you want to get that episode 15 seconds before it goes up everywhere else, FragTagRadio.com, the only way. <sighs> Only way. Only. Exclusive. Only way. And then, of course, hit us up on Twitter, at Fragtag Radio, and uh, on YouTube as well. Same thing, Fragtag mm-hmm. Radio. Yes. Uh, and with that, moving on in, before we get into the reviews, uh, I just wanted to go ahead and do my Diablo 3 Ultimate Evil Edition review. Ultimate Evil. Um, so, uh, I had the game about a week before it came out, and uh, was playing. A lot of you uh, probably saw me streaming it on... Uh, on Twitch, and that was because uh, the nice guys over at Blizzard made the embargo actually a week before the game came out. I'm guessing they figured, eh, Diablo 3, the game's already been out on PC forever and on 360 for a year. Yeah. So who cares? Let them, sh- let them, let them stream a little early. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Wasn't a big deal. But, uh, but yeah, so um, they definitely have made a lot of improvements on the Xbox One and PS4 Ultimate Evil Edition over what was on 360 and PS3 last year. Um, Let's see, a few things. First of all, uh, the big thing is it's got the new expansion, the Reaper of Souls expansion, which adds a whole new act, act, to, the, act to the game uh, where you fight Malthael, uh, who is uh, the former, uh, I think he was formerly the Angel of Wisdom, but now he's calling himself the Angel of Death. So uh, he has stolen the Black Soul Stone, and it's up to you, Nephilim, to go <laughs> get that me. ass and slice him down. Uh, so... Um, Different improvements to the game. One, Loot 2.0. Uh, on 360, the, the uh, enemies would drop a lot of loot, but it wouldn't always be... It would most of the time be useless crap. Mm. Uh, loot 2.0 on the new Ultimate Evil Edition. Um, the loot, uh, you get less loot. Dro- uh, loot gets dropped less often, but the loot that gets dropped is more meaningful. So you're actually getting better stuff. And uh, I think it's a lot... A lot better that way. More rewarding, almost, I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, it definitely feels a lot more rewarding. Um, so, let's see, some of the other improvements, they added the Mystic to the game, uh, which is part of the Reaper of Souls expansion, where you can now enchant items, where any item you have, uh, maybe you're a witch doctor like me, and, who, and you're trying to get intelligence on your item, and you get an item that has dexterity on it. Well, you can re-roll the dexterity for an intelligence or increased uh, percentage to critical hit chance, critical hit damage, or maybe re-roll for vitality or, you know, poison cloud uh, damage or, you know, pretty much anything you want. Now, when you re-roll something, you'll get three random choices and you have to choose one of those three choices. One of those three choices will be the property that's already on there. So really, you're only getting two new choices. But uh, rest assured, and don't feel bad, because if it turns out, if you get two shitty ones, you can always roll that property again mm. uh, for hopefully you get a better one. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, but once you've chosen a property to, re- to, re- to re-roll, that is the only property that you can re-roll on that item. You can't re-roll this property and then go re-roll another property on the same item. You know, If you did that, there would be no point. Any item could be pretty much customized. Yeah, that's right? true, yeah. So, uh, and then you, at the Enchantress, uh, also known as the Mystic, the Mystic, uh, you can also transmog items, which mainly is pretty much just changing the appearance of items. Uh, we all know in the past you would get, uh, you know, like a, a, a set of awesome items that you would wear, and they all, you know, worked, worked good for your character, but they might have been from different sets or just didn't look well together, and you look like a fucking clown <laughs> so now you can go to the old mystic and transmog your items and make them all look nice and matched and of course you can still die to make the colors match and uh, you can just pimp up pimp out your character and make them look a lot more sweet nice. yeah that's cool yeah 
Um, also, a uh, big addition is uh, adventure mode, where you can now do bounties and rifts. So pretty much you have to beat the campaign first. After you beat the campaign, you can play adventure mode, um, which is a welcome addition because in the old version of Diablo 3 on 360 and PS3, you pretty much just had to pay the camp play the campaign over and over and over and over and over, just increasing the difficulty each time, which was all right, but it got a little boring after yeah. a while. So with adventure mode, um, there are... All the waypoints are unlocked from, from the get-go through all five acts. You can seamlessly trans, uh, teleport through the acts, through the waypoints, all the waypoints in each act, go anywhere you want, anytime. And there are five random bounties in each act every time you load up the game. So say you do uh, the bounties in Act 1. Uh, if you do all five of the bounties in Act 1, Tyrael, who is just standing there in town, will reward you with a Herodric Catch. Herodric Catch will give you rare items... Blood shards, which we'll get to in a minute, and uh, rift fragments, jewels, and maybe even some gold too, uh, with a slight chance for a legendary. Um, so, uh, blood shards, you get those by completing bounties out of Roderick Catches, and you can get them from defeating Rift Guardians. Rift Guardians we'll get to in a minute. But the blood shards, any blood shards you get, you spend, there is only so far one place to spend them. And that is at this stingy, stingy bitch in town named Kadala, who uh -huh. sells unidentified items. You go there, you spend your blood shards for unidentified items. Could be chest plate, pants, belt, sword, shield, whatever. Uh, nine times out of, or I'd say eight times out of ten, it'll be a rare gold uh, yellow item. Uh, and then maybe two to three times out of ten, it'll be an uncommon item, blue, uh... And then every once in a while, yeah. she'll give you a legendary or a set item. Uh, you can carry a maximum of 500 blood shards. I would recommend having the max of 500 before you go to her. That way you can have 500 blood shards and just keep, if you're looking for a, a, a rare chest piece, just go there and just keep hitting the chest piece over and over and over and over and over and over and over until you run out of blood shards. I would say there is a 75% chance you will get one legendary by spending all 500 of your wow. blood shards. Stingy is right. She's stingy. Yeah. And there's a good, there's a good chance you might not even get dick. So, <laughs> uh, I'd be mad about that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, like I was saying, by doing the bounties and opening the Roderick Catches, uh, you get Rift Keys. Rift Keys are where it's at because you use the Rift Keys to open Rifts, which there is a little obelisk in town. You walk up to it, spend five of your Rift Keys, it opens a Rift. Rifts are what you want to do because after you beat the campaign, the only thing to do is fight harder enemies and pimp out your character with better and better and stronger gear. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So... Uh, the best way to do that is in the rifts. You open a rift, you go in there by yourself, with friends, whatever. When you're in the rift, there is a 50% better chance for getting legendary item drops. Nice. And if you're playing on a torment difficulty, that will increase the chance for legendary drops even more. I think torment 1 is like a 28% chance, torment 2, 52%. Uh, Torment 3 is like 120, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth, all the way up to Torment 6, which is like a 500% chance for uh, legendaries. Yeah. And if you're doing it in, inside of a rift on Torment, it's like almost 600, maybe even a little more. Wow. Plus, if you're wearing Magic Find on your gear, you can have a maximum of 300% Magic Find, but only 10% of that is going to go towards legendary. So if you have a full 300% Magic Find, only 30% of that is going towards Legendary. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. But every little bit counts. Every, every little bit helps. So, uh, you know, yeah, try and do what you can. And it's beneficial to have more people in your game because the chance of getting Legendaries and more gold goes up by 10% for every other player in the game up to a max of 4. Okay. All right. So, um, you know, uh, I think I've covered most of what's new. Uh, I'm sure there's a couple things that I missed, but you can check out my full review at fragtagradio.com. Uh, it covers literally everything. Didn't leave anything out of that, so feel free to check it out if you want more information. Yeah. Um, but I would say five frags all day long. I got, Like I said, I got the game a week before it came out. I've been playing it every day since. There has not been, yeah. not been one day that I haven't played Diablo 3 since then. Usually 
I will get a game to review and I will play it until I finish my review. If it's a good game, I might play it for maybe a few days to a week after I finish my review. Very seldom is it so good that I'm still playing it three weeks later. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So Diablo 3 Ultimate Evil Edition. Great, 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 great game. Five brags all day. Pick it up. Even if you're not a fan of dungeon crawlers, um, I would say get it anyway. Or at least try and find a friend who has it and go play it. Check it out. I know I have friends on my friends list who normally don't play that type of game. And they're, but they're all on it. They you know, were convinced to try it by me or somebody else, yeah, yeah. and they've been playing it ever since. It is like crack for gamers. <laughs> yeah. Literally. You will be addicted. There will be long, sleepless nights up into the wee hours of the morning. You'll probably call into work or out of school or whatever. <laughs> school, yeah. You know, depending on your age, but it's a great game. So, um, and with that... I think we are about ready to roll into the news. So, the Xbox One Smart Glass app can now be re, uh, used to record gameplay, which uh, is most likely because uh, since uh, you can buy the console without Connect now, yeah. they need an easy way to be able to record without having to go through the menus. So, uh, they've added it to Smart Glass, so you can now do it from your tablet or phone without having to leave the game and go and snap with your controller. Streamlined it, made it easier. Exactly. Yeah. And Assassin's yeah. Creed. Yep. Assassin's Creed Unity released delayed to November 11th. It's, uh, you know, I don't know why they delayed it. Maybe the day that it was coming out, there was maybe something else coming out on that day That's that they didn't thinking, feel like yeah. competing with. Yeah. Or whatever. But uh, needless to say, it's not that big of a delay. No. So, what is it, like a week to two? So, Something like that, yeah. Uh, It'll be out this year still, which yeah. is a lot better than Watch Dogs, which got delayed last year, clear into the next, next year, year, or yeah. Battlefield Hardline, which was supposed to come out this year and has been delayed clear into next year. Yeah. Uh, now, I thought, no, this is just top news of the week right here. <laughs> yeah. Activision has worked out a deal with Mountain Dew and Doritos, and if you buy Mountain Dew or Doritos, you have a chance to get in-game items, helmets, Armors I mean, for your you guy. It, yeah. They don't do anything to make you to make you any better at the game. They just look. It's just the. the they just prowess. look cool. Yeah. And uh, you can also get double XP. We know how everybody is all. Yeah. What was that Modern Warfare Three? Uh, when oh, I first started doing that. that. I yeah. started doing that. Boy, I drank so much Mountain Dew. They great. did it with Halo Four too. Yeah, yeah, they did, didn't they? Yeah. So uh, I know everybody was so excited to hear that news. <laughs> I know everyone's just going to run out right now yeah. and just go buy as much Mountain Dew and DLR as they can. So, uh, you know, it might not have even started just yet. It might be starting uh, towards the end of September. That's but what I was uh, thinking, yeah. So, whew, hold yourself. Don't go running out just Don't yet. Don't rushing yet. Yeah, it, it'll be soon, though. Rest assured. Uh -huh. uh, 500 gig hard drive coming out for 360. And even though Xbox One is in full swing now, um, you know, there's still games coming out for 360, and Xbox One owners like myself, who have kept their 360s, uh, are out of hard drive space. Yeah. So even with my 320 gig hard drive and my USB stick, both of them are full. I need this hard drive in yeah. my life. So it's nice they finally did something like that. I, I mean, will definitely be getting it when it comes out. Now uh, it's uh, retailing for 110, which is actually. Weirdly, twenty dollars cheaper than the three hundred and twenty gig one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So glad to see they're lowering the price down a little bit. Uh, that's nice. If you ask me, one hundred and ten is still a little steep for hard drive, but whatever. I'd have been happier yeah. with seventy five, eighty. But it is what it is. Uh, Defense Grid two coming out September twenty third on Xbox One, PC, and uh, the other console. Uh, so you know, anyone who's played Defense Grid. On 360, you know what mm -hmm. it is. It's a tower defense type yeah. game. Matter of fact, Defense Grid was on, was free for the games. Was it gold, was, yeah, was like yeah. a few months ago. ago yeah. uh, so I'm sure you've probably played it. If you haven't, then you're not a gold member in the first place, and you're probably not going to buy Defense Grid too. <laughs> but it's, it's, if you like tower defense, it's one of the best. Yeah. Next up, Assassin's Creed Rogue will eventually be coming to Xbox One. Which is good news because when I heard it announced, I was like, it's cool. And it's coming out. I would love to play as a Templar. 
Although I don't really feel like going backwards to my 360 if I don't have to. Mm -hmm. And I'll be playing Unity anyway, which is coming out at the same time. So if I got to buy one, I'm buying Unity and was probably not going to get Rogue at all. Uh, but now that it's going to be coming out later, you know, probably yeah. end up getting yeah, it. By then, up. I'll be done with Unity. Yeah, that's true. You know, and it'll be coming yeah, out on Xbox yeah. One. If they're smart, they'll release it at a slow time of the year, like uh, early point. to yeah. mid-summer yeah. when yeah. no other games, games are coming, coming out. out. Yeah. If they do that, I think it'll sell well. Um, and with that, uh, whether you're an Xbox fan or not, Got to give congratulations to the Xbox team. They are launching in 28 more countries this month. Yeah. Which, to put it in perspective, they've been available in like, what, 13 to 17, Something some, like somewhere that. in yeah, their countries yeah. for the last year, whereas PS4 has been available in like almost 50. Yeah. So, and then people wonder why PS4 has had such better, uh, such better uh, worldwide sales. Well, yeah. I would think a lot of it has to do with the fact that Xbox One was only available no in a fraction of the countries that PS4 was available in. Exactly. So now that they're launching in 28 countries this month, uh, I think... By the end of this year, you will see sales rising a pretty significant amount. Oh, yeah. Um, that but between that and the holiday season, oh yeah, it's yeah. uh, it's gonna be big things. Uh, just to go down the list, uh, a couple of them have already passed. Uh, Chile, Colombia, and Japan uh, already passed, and then uh, Belgium came on the fifth. Belgium, the Republic, uh, Denmark, Finland, Greece, Hungary, Netherlands, Norway. Poland, Portugal, Saudi Arabia, Slovakia, Sweden, Switzerland, Turkey, and the United Arab uh, place. So, yeah, <laughs> that place. That place. It's available in all those places now. Uh, and then coming on the 15th, it'll be coming to Israel, the Holy Land, baby. Yeah. And then after that, on the 23rd, coming to China, Hong Kong, India, Korea, Singapore, and South Africa. <laughs> and last, on September 26th, to Russia. Wait for that. It's going to be big things. Whoa, it's going to sell millions over there. Probably not. But Probably, yeah. Uh, <laughs> either way, it'll also be coming to Argentina sometime soon afterward. It was originally supposed to come out this month, too, along with the rest of those, but yeah, yeah. got delayed at the last minute for some reason. Um, probably they need to work on localizing the, the voice with that a little more. Probably wasn't ready to go, and they didn't want to release it half-assed, which is probably a good idea. Yeah. So, and uh, with that... Um, been a lot of um, good updates coming out since Xbox One came out. And if there's one thing everybody knows is that Microsoft has been doing a really good job of updating the Xbox One every month, bringing new mm -hmm. features and, and and fixing and changing and tweaking and twerking and you know <laughs> every month, Just doing a little, yeah, you know, making it. making things better. better so yeah. um, and it's not it's not going to stop anytime soon. They're going to continue to do it. So a couple things we can look forward to. One is being able to stream media from a USB stick, like That's if cool. you have yeah. movies or music on a flash drive, That's be able really to cool, actually, yeah. plug that into your Xbox One and stream those movies or music right from the flash drive, or or possibly your phone or, oh, or tablet as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, and then uh, a lot of people uh, like J Ray have been complaining like that they would like to have a guide like on 360 oh, yeah, yeah. where you hit the guide and, and the thing comes there, up yeah. and you can choose pretty much the whole dashboard from that little guide. Right, yeah. Uh, so they're adding something like that um, to the Xbox One. It's not going to be an overlay, which like J Ray wanted, mm -hmm. but it's going to be uh, it's going to be a snap. So you'll be like Xbox Snap Guide, and then it'll come up on the right hand side, and it'll pretty much have all the options that the guide on 360 had, where you can pretty much go anywhere, select anything, do whatever you want. Um, and that's about it. They're yeah. going to have uh, threaded messages also. Um, and I hope that they're going to be adding uh, voice messaging soon yeah. as well. It's needed. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, not an update to the console, but they need to come out with a chat pad accessory Here we go. Here we go again. for the controller. I know yeah. I've said it on the Numerous last times. five episodes in a row. They need to listen and just do but it. But it needs to happen. We need a chat pad. Phil Spencer, mm -hmm. come on. Come on, man. Come on. Chat pad. Chat pad. Give it time. It'll happen. All right. Okay. 
How to Survive coming to Xbox One and PS4. This was like a arcade top down zombie yeah, survival I game. That. I remember when you reviewed that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, had reviewed it like about a year ago on yeah, 360. I guess so, yeah. so if you're interested in reading more about it, you can find the review on fragtagradio.com. Uh, but it, this is the Storm Warning Edition coming to Xbox <laughs> One and PS4. Uh, it will, I'm uh, assuming. That the uh, graphics will look a little bit better. Probably not much because it was already a pretty crappy looking game to begin with. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure the frame rate will be better. Oh, yeah. Uh, but now, while it wasn't the best looking game, it was a fun arcade game. Yeah. Uh, and had a good sense of humor, too. I remember you saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and this will include all the DLC that has uh, come out for the game thus far, including the Heat Wave DLC and Kovacs Wave DLC. So uh, all for the price of just the regular game. So nice. yeah. if you haven't played it before, um, I would say, I would say, I would say it's probably worth checking out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you've already beat it on 360, not sure if you're going to want to get it again. Depends on how much you like the game. That's true, yeah. And uh, with nice. that, we are ready for page two. Dead or Alive 5, last round announced for Xbox One and PlayStation 4. I'm kind of excited about that. It's You're a, a Dead or Alive 5 well, fan? That's a fighting game, and very rarely do I see those come out. I mean, so, especially on the newer systems. What's what's the last round edition guy going for? Well, the last round edition, apparently, <laughs> it include all the characters, features, and extra content from all the previous Dead or Alive 5 games. The ultimate and Dead or Alive 5 but, Plus. Yeah. and it, um, But no. sadly, though... So far, it's been announced for Japan. 2015. Yeah. And, no uh, word on us or the UK yet. Yeah. Well, it's coming, but we have, they haven't announced not even a, yeah. a window yet. Yeah. So, uh, but rest assured, it'll be coming eventually. It will be. I'm sure it'll be great, too. And uh, if they're smart, it'll be sooner than later. Yeah. Next, uh, Saints Row 4 confirmed for Xbox One and PS4. And there's a standalone expansion coming for it. Uh, January 2015. Mm. You'll be able to get the game uh, or the expansion by itself. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. The expansion is Saints Row Get Out of Hell. <laughs> yeah, that's what, yeah. Where you're uh, playing as Johnny Get. Supposedly, it takes a lot of uh, humor and inspiration from like Disney movies. Really? Yeah, which is funny. Well, that is kind of funny. I kind of um, want to see that now. Even now. <laughs> so, and then uh, also Saints Row 4, the reelected edition. That mm -hmm. will have uh, the full game along with all the DLC See, that came out with it. Then you'll be able to get that for Xbox One or PS4 as well. So I'm actually looking forward to playing that yeah, myself, I being a, really a Saints Row uh, fan. So definitely looking forward to that. Hopefully, uh, it's launching the 27th of January, by the way. Oh, okay. So January 27th, 2015. Uh, but, um, you know, I'm sure the graphics will be a little bit better. Frame rate probably better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hopefully the price... Uh, would be I will uh, it probably won't be because it's coming with all the DLC yeah, and all right. that. But, so they'll justify that. Yeah, yeah. but I, I was hoping it would be like forty bucks. That's but what I was saying. It'd be nice. Probably won't be. Though. Well, we can hope. Now here is good news for me and my buddy Def. Oh, Def, what's up? Resident Evil Revelations Two coming to Xbox One and Three Sixty. Mm -hmm. uh, me. And Def, you guys it, played the hell out yeah, of that game. Yeah, we played the co-op on that game for days, weeks. Um, it was like Resident Evil mixed with Diablo. Well, you know, it was like a great yeah, combination. Yeah, yeah. Co-op, but you're like trying to get better, better gear and items, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's rare, legendary stuff, and uh, mm -hmm. there was like uh, places where you could go to put in secret codes. And what? Capcom would like let out certain secret codes every week, and you could That's go cool. put them that. in and like wow. unlock uh, weapons. So That's neat. Yeah. if you were really into it and kept up with the codes, yeah, you could get you some could pretty cool stuff. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm hoping they keep up that tradition with Revelations too. Uh, rumors are that this one's going to be starring Claire Redfield, oh. which uh, is the chick from Code Veronica. Yeah, yeah. Which is actually my favorite Resident Evil of all time. Uh, Dreamcast. Yeah, great, yeah. great Resident Evil. If you haven't played it, it's on 360. Uh, Code, yeah, Code Veronica X Edition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check it out. It is a good game. Other than that, no real big word on uh, what the Revelation 2 is going to be about. Just all rumors and speculation at this point. But uh, 
If it's anything like the first Revelations, it's going to be great because Revelations is what has needed to happen to Resident Evil for a long time. It was a return to the series roots. Yeah, because before they had six, yeah. which I remember you played, and you were like, ah, uh, then they Five had... was pretty much the same way. Yeah, yeah, It yeah. was more like an action third person. Some, it was like yeah. Resident Evil mixed with Gears. Yeah, I guess sort that's of. a good way to put it. Um, yeah. But, you know, it just didn't feel like Resident Evil anymore. It was, definitely wasn't scary. What was that one Resident Evil game? What was it? Uh, Operation Raccoon City? Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was like Resident Evil and SOCOM. That's what I, yeah, mixed yeah. Mixed together. Which, that was actually a pretty, pretty decent game, I thought. Well, I thought it would be better with, as long as you got a group of friends. Yeah, and it was. Too. Uh, but I actually liked that game better than I liked Resident Evil 6 and 5, mm-hmm. and a lot of people will probably disagree with me on that. Yeah, I've read a lot. Like, but, review uh, critics were like, yeah, exactly. But I, but, but I liked Operation Raccoon City myself. Uh, Gunsport coming to Xbox One early 2015. That seems interesting right here. It's like volleyball or speak tech raw, oh. ex- uh, except instead of using hands or feet, you use guns to propel, propel a ball into your opponent's territory. Yeah. Seems like it'd be fun. Uh, it just, this is definitely going to be like an arcade type of game, yeah, yeah. so not going to be a full sixty dollars release. No, I would say no. fifteen to twenty bucks available yeah. digital download. Uh, but the art style on it looks pretty cool, and uh, from what I'm reading on it, it sounds pretty awesome. Uh, if you and your teammate are truly in sync, you can get off a team attack, shoot the ball at the same time, and it'll go twice as fast. But your opponents can fire it right back at you if they're uh, drift compatible. So. Yeah. Uh, their team-based special attack and stage-specific gimmicks give game uh, game variety and flavor, but the biggest variety comes from online players, unpredictable and ever-changing yeah. foes. Of course. So uh, it actually sounds you know pretty cool. It does sound pretty which, good. Which you know I don't always put uh, indie games into the outline, but that yeah, one yeah. it sounded it sounded kind of unique. So Fresh, I thought it deserved yeah. to be talked about. Gunsport. Gunsport. Uh, and then back to Diablo for a minute. Uh, the uh, new 2.10 update came out on PC about a week ago. It's going to be coming to consoles, okay. Xbox One, and PS4 uh, soon. And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's got uh, some cool things going to be coming along with that. Uh, one, it's going to have greater rifts, which when you go into a rift and mm. you fight the rift guardian, the rift guardian will not only drop blood shards but also have a chance to drop a greater rift key which you can then use the greater rift key to open another rift with even harder enemies and a better chance for legendary so it's like drops a rift inside a rift yeah oh, okay. but it's timed so you've got a oh. you've got a certain amount of time Man, i hate times to uh to do as much as you can get as much legendary whatever as, as you can yeah uh they're also adding uh seasons and a leaderboard and uh, if you take part in seasons, it's going to be kind of like prestiging on Call of Duty, where oh, you can oh boy. you can t- put your character into the season, and it'll start your character all the way back to level one. Mm-hmm. But you'll have a higher chance for getting better items, oh, um, okay. and, nice. and there will be season specific items as well that you'll oh. only be able to get if you're part of the oh, season. I see. Now, uh, rest assured, don't feel bad if you don't feel like taking part in the seasons. I won't be. Uh, yeah. But because those items will be coming to regular gameplay later. Um, oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, after yeah. it's after it's over with, with yeah. after the season's over, so you just have to wait a little bit longer. Um, and with that, I think that's about the gist of. Oh yeah, uh, last thing: legendary gems. Oh, um, if those? you get a legendary gem, you can socket it into your item, and uh, supposedly legendary gems are infinitely upgradable. You can just keep upgrading them over and over and over and over and over and making them better and better and wow. better and better and better. Yeah. It'll just cost more and more and more and more and more every time. Well, it should be a problem for you. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> I'm good. Uh, and with that, moving on, we got two more little news bits. One, State of Decay coming to Xbox One in 1080p, yeah. 60 frames per second. With all the DLC, it's going to be Awesome. State of Decay has got to be one of, if not, my most favorite arcade game on 360. It's a good survival zombie game. Open world. Yeah. It's probably the best one that's been done so far. I'd say so, because I remember when it first came out, it surprised me. A lot of zombie games done, and maybe even a couple open world ones, but none that have the good survival elements. Yeah. Like State of Decay, where you're actually building your base. Yeah, remember the gardens you have to build. Yeah, you you have to swap out characters. Pimp out your base, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
get yeah. to let them rest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's actually pretty cool. And there's not like just one specific spot. You get there's tons of different places yeah, yeah. where you could possibly build your base. Yeah. And so you go in there, you choose. And that's what's cool about State of Decay. It's all up to you. You play mm -hmm. how you want. There is, like, you know, a little bit of a storyline there, you know, just to give it some background. Kinda, but it's yeah. really about playing how you want to play, which is uh, what, what really makes State of Decay great. Oh, yeah, I agree. Because, like I said, in that game, I, I sadly haven't really visited it a whole lot, though. I haven't gotten around to it. Yeah, if they could, like, put some sweet co-op in there. Man, that's what the game's been missing, like, from day one, is yeah. co-op. If we, if we can get together in that game and just have a, a town, yeah. oh, it'd be great. Build up our own little survival. and like, a, just, and like I would never get off that thing. Recruit other friends to come yeah. and help you come and up with your base. And then we have some and shady stuff going on. We have to, like... It'd be awesome. Taking like, uh, taking over other survivor groups. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Have to cut some goat. You know, We'd be like the governor. Go. On my <laughs> patch. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then last bit of news is actually a pretty cool piece of news. Oh, oh wow, yeah, it is. Dragon Age Inquisition has been announced to have a four player co op mode, um, and it's uh, going to be like sort of like Mass Effect's co op was in Mass okay. Effect Three. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's a dungeon crawler like Diablo. And you got that seems yeah. Uh, whenever you play, the dungeons are randomized, just okay. like Diablo. Okay. So the dun er, er, even if it's a, the same map, it'll feel different every time you play because the way it's set up is randomized every time. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you'll be able to open chests, get gear, yeah. items for your character. That's cool, actually, yeah. And uh, there's even going to be crafting too, so you'll be able to craft items for your character. Man. And uh, you know there will be different classes, and it's going to have like a free to play feel uh, too, even though it's part of a paid game. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There'll be you know some microtransactions in there to where you can uh, you know buy uh, packs. Oh. So just like it was in Mass Effect Three, like they oh, had gotcha. they had yeah, the Spectre yeah, packs yeah, yeah. or whatever. Yep, yep, yep. So uh, you could either earn money through the game to open those, or, or you could you spend real money. money. It's up to you. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, so and it'll be the same way here. Uh, which I can't even lie, I spent like a good fifty bucks on Mass oh, Effect Three. No. Oh no, I did. Yeah, I didn't. Sp I just remember buying point cards. And then being gone and <laughs> looking at the Mass Effect 3 screen. <laughs> yeah, I can't even lie. It was, it was just so addicting. I think it was addicting um, in the multiplayer. And hopefully this will be the same way. Yeah, and this just sounds even better. Um, Inquisition makes up a free-to-play dungeon crawler separate from the game's main game's campaign. Each mission will span 20 to 30 minutes, and each of the um, co-op campaigns will auto-generate a level made up of smaller segments. So the maps are designed to shift, Ooh. and more of these campaigns will release down the road. For free, just like all the Mass Effect Three co-op maps yeah. were free every time they had they came yeah. out, yeah. they'll be the same here. So there will be DLC map packs, but they'll all be free. So I think that's going to be cool. Um, they've said that there's not going to be a season pass, which is weird because that kind of makes it's me think, that kind of makes me think there's not going to be any single player story DLC, which I know oh. is sad for J Ray. Yeah, he'll be disappointed because he, he like is not a co-op multiplayer. But this is guy. a good, nice direction though, because I've never really gotten into Dragon Age a whole lot, but this might actually... Yeah, well, and then the the, the, the it's good, you're going to get your money's worth because mm -hmm. Inquisition, the main campaign is 150 to 200 hours right there. Oh, wow. Okay. Plus all the hours you'll get from the dungeon crawling co-op. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Definitely uh, get your money's worth out of all that, yeah. It's going to be well worth the money, I think. Yeah. And uh, I would say uh, Inquisition has done shaped up to be one of my most anticipated games of the year. Oh, has it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right up there with Sunset Overdrive, Forza Horizon yeah. 2, and Halo: The Master Chief Collection. Also looking forward to Ori and the Blind Forest as well. Can't lie. Oh, yeah. And uh, Killer Instinct season two. Yeah, that's coming. I'm looking forward to that mostly. But uh, so yeah, so it's been a great episode. Yes, yes. Thanks for joining us. Thank we'll you. be back uh, probably next, next week. week. Yeah. Uh, with another retrospect uh, next week, Super Nintendo. Oh, I thought you said you wanted to do Genesis Master System. I mean, we'll do Super Nintendo. We'll leave it as a surprise. Oh, okay. Got to tune in to find out. Peace. Later. Frag Attack Radio.